This podcast is brought to you throughout the month of November by our friends at Minimal Case. They are the cases that are so thin and light, they keep your phone gorgeous and add zero bulk. It's crazy how thin these cases are. It's also crazy how inexpensive they are because if you use the code DDPODCAST, you'll get 25% off your order, which is pretty awesome. Just go to MinimalCase.com and use the promo code DDPODCAST or click the link in the show notes. Once again, that's MNMLCase.com and use the promo code DDPODCAST to get 25% off your order, and we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Good morning, Digit Fam! Adam Dowd with some really good news from the world of tech. Or at least I think it might be good news, kind of more of a wait-and-see kind of thing, but our top story has me smiling for sure. And by the way, this morning I timed myself reading the Digit Daily newsletter, and it came in at under four and a half minutes. Of course, that's without following any links or anything, but still, that is a great use of your time. And then you can play the Which Stories Will Adam Talk About game. So let's find out! It is November 7th, 2019. And this is your Digit Daily. Last week, we talked about Airbnb and a story about a scam that's running on the platform where Airbnb property owners pull basically a bait and switch on their properties. Also last week on Halloween, tragically, five people lost their lives at a party hosted at an Airbnb mansion, and for the record, the party was completely against Airbnb's terms of service and the owner's wishes. The partygoers were 100% to blame here for the party, not for the shooting. That's a different conversation. So Airbnb announced changes to its policies today, which are designed to address those concerns. First, let's talk about the party. Airbnb is setting up a 24-7 neighbors hotline, which will be there basically for neighbors to call and complain about noise, etc., etc. The company will be staffing this hotline with a, quote, rapid response team. Of course, what that exactly means is fairly unclear. How will they respond rapidly from a call center? It's a good step, don't get me wrong, but how is a hotline going to break up a party? Call them and yell at them in harsh language? Actually, maybe they'll staff it with collections agents. Those can be some mean mother Also, Airbnb is looking to make every listing on Airbnb 100% verified by December 15th, 2020. And some people might want to poo-poo this time frame. It's going to take over a year? Well, yes, actually it will. And I'm frankly glad that Airbnb put a realistic time frame on this. It will take a long time to verify all their listings. Of course, in the same breath, they also said they wouldn't be able to visit every address personally, which I get, but it's still less than desirable. But they will go through steps to ensure that photos of Airbnbs are genuine. And I have two suggestions on this, by the way. And since apparently Airbnb listens to this podcast, I'll go ahead and give them. First, hire that vice reporter to track down listings for you because, frankly, she completely killed it. Second, require photos be geotagged and then scrub the exit data before posting them on the site. If a photo isn't geotagged to the address, mayday! Now, I know for a fact that geotags can be faked, so it's not a bulletproof plan, but it's a bare minimum level of security that should be in place. Finally, Airbnb is offering full 100% refunds or a rebooking at a place of equal or greater value if something like this happens. Remember that hotel front desk I talked about? This is kind of that. So Airbnb is trying to address all of these concerns, which is great. The fact that Airbnb has been around for 11 years and is only just now actually verifying that its listings exist is less great. According to Airbnb, it was founded based on trust that people are fundamentally good and trustworthy, which is a lovely assumption. But rotten apples, man. There are a lot of rotten apples out there, and they ruin everything for everyone. So overall, I'm giving Airbnb high marks today and removing the Gas Buddy label. I personally still don't trust Airbnb and probably won't trust them until December of 2020 when they've actually verified their listings. Maybe then I'll start looking at the site again. But overall, I really like what I reported on today. Good for you, Airbnb. You get a cookie, and the rest of us get the roundup! First of all, yesterday I talked about a Xerox HP potential merger. Today it's official, or at least it's official that Xerox is making an offer at $22 per share. And the only reason I bring this up is because I saw a great tweet from Mike Murphy, technology editor at Quartz, who said, 1993 called, they want their merger back. Well played, Mike. 
Android authorities David Amell took the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 for a spin. It's the first phone with a 108 megapixel camera. In addition to that camera, this phone comes with a 5,260 milliamp hour battery, but also a mid-range Snapdragon 730G processor and 6 gigabytes of RAM. By the way, in addition to that 108 megapixel sensor, the phone also comes with an ultra-wide lens, Google, and two different telephoto lenses, one at 2x and one at 3.7x. And finally, there's a two megapixel macro camera. So for those keeping score, yes, that's five cameras on the back of this puppy. The phone retails for around 550 euros, which is about 610 US dollars that you won't be able to spend on this phone because Chinese. But if you don't live in America, this is a very, very tempting phone indeed. It seems Bill Gates isn't satisfied with having developed the biggest desktop computer operating system in the world because he still regrets missing out on the opportunity to drive Android into the ground. And I get that. But dude, it's been like almost 20 years at this point. I mean, I get it, but recent efforts with Google and Samsung might reignite Microsoft's penetration into mobile with things like DeX and app mirroring. This could be just as exciting, and you already let Google lay the groundwork. Things are looking up, Bill. Target has a whopper of a deal on Google Pixel phones for Black Friday. If you pick up a new Pixel 4 or Pixel 4 XL, you'll get a $300 gift card. If you pick up a Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL, you'll get a $550 gift card, both of which are insane. But it comes with a catch. You need to activate the phone with AT&T or Verizon in order to get the deal, which is fine if you happen to need to activate a new line for some reason. But for the rest of us, yeah, no. Sorry, AT&T. When I said you couldn't pay me to come back to you, this is kind of what I was talking about. But still, Black Friday be crazy, yo. James Vincent at The Verge wonders aloud, why isn't the Amazon Echo getting any better? He notes that in the five years he's been using an Echo device, the task he completes on it haven't really evolved. He still asks for some music or weather or random Wikipedia questions. Amazon really hasn't made Alexa any better at being an assistant, and I agree with that. One reason James cites is due to the lack of assistant approaching anything useful on the phone, since we all live on our phones anyway. I wonder if this might start to change as Echo Frames and more accurately Echo Buds start to hit the streets. Time will tell, and I'm still all Google all the time, but I'd like to see Google start making some aggressive moves that Alexa has made over the last few years. And finally, back in March of 2018, a self-driving Uber car struck and killed a pedestrian in Arizona at night while crossing the street. Now the NTSB has a theory as to why. The car didn't know about jaywalkers. Which is to say, the car didn't properly identify the victim, Elaine Hertzberg, as a pedestrian because she wasn't crossing the street at a crosswalk. As a Chicago resident where jaywalking has elevated into an art form, y'all better get that fixed. But it also should be mentioned that as a professional jaywalker myself, I have a heightened awareness of the fact that between myself and a 2,000 pound box of death hurtling down the street at 40 miles per hour, my safety is pretty much my responsibility. And if I get hit, it's probably because I screwed up. I'm not trying to blame the victim here, but you know, as we move towards our autonomous driving future, you gotta keep your head in a swivel, folks. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow.